What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, September 26, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeartRadio. .com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The villainous Grindelwald sets his plans into motion to ride the wizarding world of an all non-magical beings in the latest trailer for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. The clip released Tuesday features Grindelwald, played by Johnny Depp, escaping capture from the Magical Congress of the United States of America and starting to gather his many followers. As Grindelwald's presence looms, Albus Dumbledore, played by Jude Law, recruits Newt Scalamander, played by Edward Raymane, to apprehend the Dark Wizard, who threatens to destroy the peace between the wizarding and non-wizarding world worlds. Grindelwald says, the moment has come to take our rightful place in the world where we, wizards, were free. Join me or die. Other moments from the trailer includes Newt reuniting with friends Tina Goldstein, played by Catherine Waterston, and Jake McCullowski, played by Dan Folger. Newt having a, converse, a confrontation with his brother Thesis, played by Calum Turner, and the appearance of the genie, played by Claudia Kim, Voldemort's snake in the Harry Potter films. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald from director David Yates, with the script by Wizarding World creator J.K. Rowling, is set to arrive in theaters on November 16th. Allison Sudal, Urza Miller, Zoe Kravitz, William Nailenam, Kevin Guthrie, Carmen Iogo, and Poppy Corbichuch also star. On Monday, Warner Brothers released a set of character posters for the film that featured the main cast, including Newt, Tina, Dumbledore, and Grindelwald. Actor Michael B. Jordan unveiled the latest poster for Creed 2 ahead of its anticipated release of the sequel's newest trailer. Jordan, who reprised his role as Adonis Johnson, tweeted a photo Tuesday showing the new poster for the film, the latest in Sylvester Stallone's Rocky franchise. The poster shows Jordan on his knees in a boxing ring with a look of intense emotion on his face. Uh, Jordan's tweet says the latest trailer for the movie is expected to be released Wednesday. Creed 2, which also stars Stallone, Tessa Thompson, Wood Harris, Russell Hornsby, Florian Big Nasty Manitou, Andre Ward, Felicia Rashad, and Delph Lundgren, is set to be released on November 21st. Steve Cappell Jr. directed the movie from a script by Stallone and Chio Hadari Cooker. Kay McKinnon has been cast in the upcoming film about Fox News and its former chairman and CEO Roger Ailes. McKinnon will be seen in the untitled film as a producer at, at Fox News, a role that is not based on a real person, Deadline reported. McKinnon, best known for her time on Saturday Night Live, will be joined by an all-star cast that includes Charlize Theron as former anchor Megan Kelly, Nicole Kidman as former anchor Gretchen Carlson, John Lithgow as Ailes, and Margot Robbie as a fictional associate producer. Allison Janney is also attached to the star, to star noted the rap. The project will center on the women who accuse Ailes of his sexual misconduct. Ailes left Fox News in July 2016 following allegations from Carlson and Kelly. He then died in May 2017 at the age of 77. Carlson won a sexual harassment lawsuit against Fox News and Ailes in September 2016 that resulted in a $20 million settlement from the network. Jay Roach is directing based on a script by Charles Randolph. Theron is producing alongside with Roach, Randolph, Margaret Riley, Beth Kono, and A.J. Dix. No release date has been announced. DC has announced that its upcoming team-up film, tentatively titled Birds of Prey, is set for release on February 7, 2020. The film, based on the Birds of Prey comic book series, will feature Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, putting together a team of other females, DC comic characters, including Black Canary, Huntress, and Renee Montoya, in order to take down a crime lord, Variety reported. A number of actresses have reportedly tested for Roby, with Roby for roles in the film, including Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Gugu Mabatha Ra, Januri Sumlet Bell, uh, Margaret Qualley, and Kristen Militi, among others. Birds of Prey is said to be directed by Kathy Yang, based on a script by Christina Hudson, who was also tapped by DC to pen the script for Batgirl following the exit of filmmaker Josh Whedon. Production is expected to begin in early 2019, noted the Entertainment Weekly. Yang is a former Wall Street Journal reporter who made her feature film debut at the Sundance Film Festival with Dead Pigs. She will be the first Asian woman ever to direct a superhero film. Robbie first portrayed Quinn, a Batman villain, who is the girlfriend of the Joker 
current 2016's Suicide Squad. The actress is producing Birds of Prey alongside Sue Kroll and Brian Unkelmless. Roby and Unkelmless previously produced together I, Tanya. Comedian Nikki Glazer and her professional partner Gleb Shevineko were the first couple to get the boot on season 27 of Dancing with the Stars in Los Angeles Tuesday night. Glazer laughed after hearing her fate. You know, it sucks. I'm not going to lie. I really, really like doing the show. And I really had such a great time, and I hope that I just proved that I did the scariest thing I've ever done, and I tried my best. It was so fun. It was so fun. Thank you for having me. Still in the running for the coveted Mirabal tro- uh, Trophy, our former Olympic gymnast Mary Lou Retton, radio personality Bobby Bones, Fuller House star Juan Pablo de Pace, model Alexis Wren, Paralympic Danielle Umstead, singer Tanish, Dukes of Hazards and Smallville star John Schneider, Harry Potter icon Evan Lynch, former NFL star Demarcus Ware, Disney Channel alum Mila Mannheim, The Facts of Life after Nexi McKeon, and Bachelor in Paradise star Joe Amblebill. Tom Bergeron and Aaron Andrews are the show's hosts. The judges' panels is comprised of Caroline Inaba, Len Goodman, and Bruno Tonini. Netflix has announced that a new season of the crime documentary series Making a Murderer will arrive on October 19th. Netflix made the announcement on Twitter Tuesday alongside a teaser trailer that features artwork of series subject Stephen Avery remains in jail after being convicted of murdering photographer Teresa Halbach along with his nephew Brendan Daisy after Avery was previously exonerated for a false rape convention, uh, conviction. Making a Murderer Part 2 will consist of over 10 episodes and will introduce conviction lawyer Kathleen Zenner as she fights for Avery, who still maintains his innocence, Netflix also said on Twitter. The new episodes will also feature Daisy's post-conviction lawyers Laura Nolanrider and Stephen Durins of the Northwestern University Center on wrongful convictions of youth, Variety reported. Daisy's case made headlines in June when the Supreme Court decided not to hear his appeal. Uh, the series creator Laura Riccardi and Maura Demis said in a statement, Stephen and Brendan, their families and their legal investigative team have once again graciously granted us access, giving us a window into the complex web of the American criminal justice. Building on part one, which documented the experience of the accused, in part two, we have chronicled the experience of the convicted and imprisoned, two men each serving life sentences for crimes they maintain they did not commit. We are thrilled to be able to share this new phase of the journey with viewers. The Royals is officially canceled following a four-season run. Lionsgate Television announced the news in a tweet Monday after the series failed to find a new home following its cancellation at E. The company wrote, Hashtag Loyals, we're so thankful for your undying support of Hashtag The Royals, but sadly our reign has officially come to an end. The company added, It's been a privilege to bring this series to life and to work with such an amazing cast and crew on four incredible seasons. Hashtag Long Live the Royals. Lionsgate Television has shopped the Royals after E axed the series in August following its season four finale. Deadline said the company's talks with its sister network Pop didn't result in the season five pickup. The Royals follows a fictional modern day British royal family. The show stars Elizabeth Hurley, William Mosley, Alexander Park, Tom Austin, and Mary Patterson. Uh, Hurley tweeted Tuesday, Hang up my tiara, the Royals is over. We shot 40 episodes and had a blast. The best cast and crew and incredible fan base. Hashtag the Loyals. Thank you for everyone. Patrick Stewart says the journey has begun on the new Star Trek series. The 78-year-old actor shared a behind-the-scenes photo Monday on Twitter with the writers for his CBS All Access show about Jean-Luc Picard. The picture shows Stewart in the writer's room with Star Trek Discovery writer Kristen Baer, Star Trek Enterprise writer James Duff, and Beautiful Mind writer Akavia Goldsman and other writers. Uh, Stewart wrote, the journey has begun. Uh, Kristen Baer, Michael Chabon, Akavia Goldsman, DeAndra Pendleton Thompson, James Duff, and yours truly, hashtag Star Trek. Stewart pit played Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation, which had a seven-season run from 1987 to 1994 and in four movies. He'll confirm in August he will reprise the character in a new series. The star says, It is an unexpected but delightful surprise to find myself excited and invigorated to be returning to John Luke Picard and to explore new dimensions within it. 
He also added, I'm looking forward to working with our brilliant creative team as we endeavor to bring a fresh, unexpected, and pertinent story to life once more. Stewart reunited with several of his Next Generation co-stars, including Marina Sirtis, LeVar Burton, and Michael Dorn over Labor Day weekend, although Sirtis later told fans she doesn't expect to appear in the new series. She said at the uh, Rose City Comic Con, we weren't asked according to the Daily Express. Barack Omar's creator Rob Thomas has announced on Twitter that four series stars, including Jason Doring, will be returning to the Hulu, for the Hulu revival of the mystery drama alongside lead Kristen Bell. Uh, Joanne Bell, who plays Veronica Mars, and Doring, who plays Logan Echoes, will be Percy Daggs III, who played Wallace Fennel, Francis Capra, who plays Weevil, and David um, Starksick, who plays Richard Casablancas. Uh, Thomas said on Twitter, Monday, alongside photos of the actors and their characters, here's who we have booked for the hashtag Veronica Mars series so far. More on the way, I swear. Bell recently confirmed that Veronica Mars will be returning with the fourth season on Hulu. The streaming service will also offer the program's three previous seasons next summer. Veronica Mars, which followed a teenage private investigator, aired for two seasons on UPN in 2004 before a third and final season aired on The CW. Thomas then directed a 2014 feature film that was funded through Kickstarter. The series, which also spawned two books co-written by Thomas and Jennifer Graham, also starred Teddy Dunn, Tina Marginino, Chris Lowell, and Ryan Hansen, who are all returning for the film. Hulu says about the upcoming season, Spring Breakers are getting murdered in New Neptune, thereby decimating the sea towns, uh, the seaside towns, lifeblood tourist industry. After Mars's investigations is hired by the parents of one of the victims to find their son's killer, Veronica is drawn into an epic eight-episode mystery that pits this and Clav's wealthy elites who would rather put an end to the month-long bacchanalia against the working class that relies on the cash influx that comes with being the West Coast answer to the Daytona Beach. NBC's new Amsterdam puts a new spin on the well-worn medical drama. What if a brilliant, passionate administrator orders his staff to prioritize patient care over the hospital's bottom line? Inspired by Dr. Eric Manheimer's nonfiction book, 12 Patients, Life and Death at Bellevue Hospital, the Feel Good Show co-stars Ryan Edgold, Freya Aguiman, Jocko Sims, Janet Montgomery, Tyler Labine, and Amplan Care. The first episode airs at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Tuesday. Uh, New uh, New Amsterdam introduced Blacklist alum Ed Gold as Dr. Max Goodwin, a physician with cancer who begins his tenure as the medical director of America's oldest hospital by firing the entire cardiac surgical staff because of shamefully high morality and infection rates. Once the doctors clear the room, Goodwin earnestly asks the remaining department chairs, how can I help, then actually listens to their suggestions. Eagle told UPI about the show. It's rooted in real person's real experiences with different patients with a system larger than himself that doesn't function as well as it could. The fact that it's coming from a place of real life experience and discovering things that Eric has learned makes the world more specific and more real and separates it from other medical dramas. Manheimer, uh, who serves as a consultant on New Amsterdam, says other shows may be compelling and entertaining. But they rarely focus on social issues such as poverty, air immigration, crime, and the high cost of health care. Government statistics shows that 3 million Americans don't have health insurance. Michael Weatherly thinks Pauly Perrette will make a triumphant return to television. The 50-year-old actor said in an interview with People published Monday that he believes his former NCIS co-star will be back following her exit from the CBS series this year. Weatherly told the magazine, I know that Polly Perrette will be back in some capacity. I'm just saying, and I, and I think that she's going to be. I think everyone misses her already, and she'll be back in funnier than ever. He added, she's a fierce lady and one of my favorite people on the planet. Perrette left NCIS in May after 15 seasons as Abby Sukoto. She later alleged she was physically assaulted multiple times on the show's set. The actress tweeted May, on May 13th, Stay safe. Nothing is worth your safety. Tell someone. Weatherly portrayed Anthony D'Annunzio in season 1 through 13 of NCIS. He and Perrette exchanged tweets in May ahead of the actress's final episode of the show. Weatherly wrote, I will be watching hashtag at Abby tonight on hashtag NCIS and telling my kids it's okay, it's okay, big kiss. Perrette responded, I love you at M underscore Weatherly, but you know that, and so does everyone else. My brother. 
Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper dazzled on the red carpet Monday. The 32-year-old singer and 43-year-old actor attended the Los Angeles premiere of A Star is Born in the Shrine Auditorium. Lady Gaga turned heads in a silver dress with a long cape and diamond jewelry, while Cooper sported a blue three-piece suit. A Star is Born marks Lady Gaga's acting debut and Cooper's first film as a director. The pair had nothing but praise for each other in an interview with people at the premiere. Gaga said, our friendship is exactly what set the tone for this film. He's such a wonderful person. He says it's got it's to it, he says it to me in the movie. He says, all you gotta do is trust me. I trust him the whole time. Cooper added, I made a friend for life. As great as this movie was, the thing that I think I'll take away forever is the relationship I have with her because she's an incredible person. I'm very lucky to have worked with her. A Star is Born is based on a 1937 film of the same name and was previously adapted as a 1954 musical starring Judy Garland and a 1976 rock musical with Barbara Streisand. Lady Gaga voiced gratitude to Cooper in August for casting her despite her inexperience as an actress. The singer said at the Venice Film Festival, There can't be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you. You just need one to believe in you, and that was him. Uh, she added, what I love so much about working with Bradley is we had a true exchange. He accepted me as an actress, and I accepted him as a musician. A Star is Born is in theaters October 5th. The movie co-stars Andrew Dice Clay, Dave Chappelle, and Sam Elliott. Pete Davidson says he got a death threat over his romance with Ariana Grande. The 24-year-old actor and comedian shared the story on Monday's episode of The Howard Stern Show following his engagement to Grande. Davidson told host Howard Stern, I got a death threat. Someone wanted to shoot me in the face because she's so hot. Do you know how insane that is? He said, I was like, am I that ugly that people want to shoot me in the face? Like, what did I do? The Saturday Night Live star says he is no longer on social media because of the negativity. The actor says, I can't. Uh, it makes me feel weird about myself whenever I think of something like if I post something I like and people just shit all over it, I'm like, you're asking for it. He added, uh, if you want to find bad stuff about yourself, you can very easily. I'm able to let it bounce off, but I think it would bother anybody. I want to beat everybody up, but you can't. Edson described his relationship with Grande as the weirdest, coolest thing that has ever happened. He says, I just think we are supposed to be together. Davidson and Grande confirmed their engagement in June after a few weeks of dating. Davidson later told Variety he proposed during a quiet moment in bed. The Hills alum Audrina Partridge recently split from boyfriend Ryan Cabrera. The 33-year-old television personality confirmed the breakup with Cabrera in a statement to E! News on Monday after getting back together with the 36-year-old singer in the spring. She says, Ryan and I have been good friends for years. He is currently on tour and I'm focusing on my daughter. Even though we are not in a romantic relationship right now, we will continue to be friends and are still in touch with each other. Partridge and Cabrera initially dated in 2010 during Partridge's time on the Hills. The pair reconnected in the spring following Partridge's split from Corey Bono, but ultimately called it quits again. So I told Us Weekly, they're really good friends first and foremost. Even though they're not together romantically anymore, they have hung out and spent time with each other. Uh, and in, another insider added, Ryan considers her a friend first and foremost. They're just having fun together. They're both busy and not in a place to focus on their relationship. Patrick is, is parents to two-year-old daughter, Kira Whitbon. She filed for divorce from Baum in September after obtaining a temporary restraining order against the television personality and BMX rider. Patrick and Kara are expected to appear on the Hills reboot, The Hills New Beginnings with Heidi Montage, Spencer Pratt, and other former The Hills stars. The new series will premiere on MTV in 2019. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1957, West Side Story premieres on Broadway. East Side Story was the original title of the Shakespeare-inspired musical conceived by choreographer Jerome Robbins, written by playwright Arthur Lawrence, and scored by composer and lyricist uh, Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim in 1949. Uh, 19, uh, 1949. A tale of star-crossed lovers, one Jewish, the other Catholic, on the Manhattan Lower East Side. The show in its original form never went into production, and the idea was set aside for the next six years. It was more than just a change of setting, however, that helped retitle the show to get off the ground in the mid-1950s. It is also the addition of a young, relatively unknown lyricist named Stephen Sondheim. 
The book by Arthur Lorenz and the incredible choreography of Jerome Robbins helped make West Side Story a work of lasting genius. But it was the strength of the songs by Sondheim and Leonard Bernstein that allowed it to make its Broadway debut on this date in 1957. The reconception of West Side Story as a tale of love across the divide of two street gangs, one land and one wife ethnic, came quickly once the creative principles returned to the project in 1955. With the support of producer Carol Crawford, plans for the show proceeded over the course of two years. But by the spring of 1957, with no financial backers ready to commit to a controversial show in which Act 1 would end with two principal characters dead as a result of gang violence, Crawford announced she was pulling out of the project. West Side Story seemed to be dead. What saved the show was the relationship between Stephen Sondheim and Broadway producer Hal Prince, whom Sondheim called with the bad news. Prince and his partner, Bobby Griffin, made arrangements for a quick visit to New York to consult with the West Side Story team, and it was there that they won over by the power of the music of Bernstein played them in his Midtown apartment. Prince later recalled about halfway through the audience and started to sing along with the material. At the end of the thing, Bobby and I looked at each other and, and we said without hesitation, we'll do it. With Prince and Griffin's backing, West Side Story got back on its track for a premiere on September 26, 1957, that would begin one of the longest initial runs in Broadway history. Also on this day in 1969, American television audiences heard the soon-to-be-famous opening line, Here's a story of a lovely lady who was living with three le- very lovely girls. As the Brady Bunch, a sitcom that would become an icon of American pop culture, airs for the first time. The show was panned by critics, and according to the Museum of Broadcast Communications, during its entire network run, the series never reached the top ten ranks of the Nielsen ratings. Yet, the program stands as one of the most important sitcoms of American 1970s television programming, spawning numerous other series on all three major networks, as well as records, lunchboxes, a cook book and even a stage show and featured film created by sherwood schwartz who previously his previously hit sitcom was gilligan's island the brady bunch followed the story of carol played by florence henderson a widow mother of three blonde daughters who marries architect mike brady played by robert reed a widower with the father of three brown hair boys the blended family lived together in a suburban los angeles home with their cheerful housekeeper alice played by ann b davis the show focused primarily on issues related to the Brady kids. Greg, played by Barry Williams. Marsha, played by Marie McCormick. Peter, played by Christopher Knight. Jan, played by Eve Plunt. Bobby, played by Mike Lookinland. And Sidney, played by Susan Olsen, who ranged from grade school ages to teenage. Although set in the late 1960s and early 1970s, a time of political and social upheaval in the United States, the Brady Bunch generally avoided controversial topics and instead presented a wholesome view of family life tackled subjects such as sibling rivalry, including Jan's now famous complaint about the focus of her sister, Marsha, 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 braces, and dating. After 177 episodes, ABC canceled The Brady Bunch, and the original episode uh, aired on August 30, 1974. However, the show soon became a massive hit and rerun syndication. The show's various spin-offs have included a 1977 variety program, The Brady Bunch Hour, a 1988 TV movie, A Very Brady Christmas, the 1995 big screen parody, The Brady Bunch Movie, with Shelley Long and Gary Cole as Carol and Mike, and its follow-up, A Very Brady Sequel, 1996, and the 2002 TV movie, The Brady Bunch in the White House. In 1992, Barry Williams published a best-selling memoir titled Growing Up Brady, I Was a Teenage Greg, which provided a behind-the-scenes look at the show and revealed the life behind the Brady Bunch's cameras was less wholesome than it seemed on TV. And also on this date in 2008, Paul Newman, one of the leading movie stars of the 20th century, dies at the age of 83 from cancer at his home in Westport, Connecticut. In a career spanning more than five decades, Newman made over 65 movies, including the classic Cool Hand Luke, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Sting, and The Verdict. As reported in the New York Times, Newman's talent as an actor was drawn from his physical grace, unassuming intelligence, and good humor that made it all seem effortless. Paul Leonard Newman was born on January 26, 1925 in Cleveland, Ohio, and raised in the nearby suburbs of Shaker Heights. In high school, he acted in school drama performances and played football. At the age of 18, Newman joined the U.S. Navy and served as a radio man gunner on a torpedo plane during World War II. After the war, Newman attended Kenyon College on a football scholarship and continued to act. 
He graduated in 1949 and began performing with small theater companies. Following the 1950 death of his father, Newman briefly moved back to Cleveland to help manage his family's sporting goods store. After a stint at the Yale Drama School, Newman made his Broadway debut in Picnic in 1953. His silver screen debut came a year later in The Silver Chalice, which he later labeled the worst film ever made. Newman's first starring movie role was in 1956, Somebody Up There Likes Me, which he portrayed real-life boxer Rocky Graziano. The famously blue-eyed Newman earned his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor with his performance in the 1959 big-screen version of Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. He went on to collect lead actor Oscar nominations for his other work in seven other films, The Hustler, 1961, HUD, 1963, Cool Hand Luke, 1967, Absence of Mouse, 1981, The Verdict, 1982, The Color of Money, 1986, and Nobody's Fool, 1994. Of those nominations, he took home only a gold statuette for The Color of Money. Additionally, he garnered an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for 2002's Road to Perdition. Newman also earned an Oscar nomination for Best Picture with 1968's Rachel Rachel, in which he directed his wife, the actress Joanne Woodward. Among Newman's many other notable cinematic performances was 1969's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, in which he teamed up with Robert Redford to play a team of bank rob- robbers in the Old West. The film was a commercial and critical success and won four Oscars. Newman and Redford collaborated again in 1973's The Sting, in which they played a pair of con men. The movie collected seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and was a big hit at the box office. In addition to acting, Newman was known for his love for auto racing. After playing a professional race car driver in 1969's Winning, he became passionate about the sport and competed in a number of races, including the prestigious 24 Hours of Le Mans, at which he took second place in 1979. In 1983, he co-founded a racing team with Carl Haas, Newman's Haas Racing, now Human's uh, Newman's Haas Laning Racing. Newman was also a noted philanthropist who launched a series of summer camps for sick children and found a multi-million dollar food business, Newman's Own, the profits of which goes to charity. And that was your entertainment report for Wednesday, September 26, 2018. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Rain Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R E Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all. <laughs>